Milé dámy, pánové, vítám vás ještě jednou u dalšího z webinářů Národního pedagogického institutu, které připravujeme v projektu SIPO. Teď mi dovolte přivítat paní Vlaďku Skopcovou, lektorku dnešního webináře Walmart School of Fillers. Dobrý den, vítám vás. A několik málo slov k naší paní lektorce. Vy jste, paní Skopcová, absolvovala na Univerzitě Karlově Fakultu sociálních věd obor sociální a veřejná politika. V rámci učitelského oboru pak postupně Cambridge Delta, Cambridge Delta a v rámci DVPP na jeho České univerzitě v Českých Budějovicích studium v oblasti pedagogických věd. Za poslední roky jste působila v pražských jazykových školách Hantich, Excellent a Accent. Jako lektor metodického kurzu TEFL jste pracovala také v jazykové škole zpěváček. V současnosti jste přes 10 let v jazykové škole Language Corner, pracujete i jako examinátorka ústní části zkoušek Cambridge English a téměř 10 let pracujete pro Macmillan Education jakožto teacher trainer a přednášející na konferencích po Evropě i v rámci České republiky, kdy jde hlavně o konference akreditované ministerstvem školství, mládeže a tělovýchovy, či pořádané asociací jazykových škol České republiky, Bridge House Publishing, International House, ILC Brno, IH Accent Praha nebo Asociace učitelů České republiky. Školení učitelů se věnujete i v rámci letních škol a na zakázku, a na částečný úvazek také pracujete v církevní základní škole a mateřské škole Archa, kde učíte angličtinu od třetí do deváté třídy. Ale angličtinu učíte všechny věkové skupiny od nejmenších po dospělé v rozpětí úrovní A0 až C2. A nesmím zapomenout připomenout, že pro NPI a SIPO jste také připravila webináře Grammar in Games, 21st Century Skills in Our Lessons a dnešní webinář Warmer Schools o kterého vás ještě jednou vítám. To už je ode mě úplně všechno. Já vám popřeji příjemný poslech a konečně předávám slovo paní Skopcové. Dobrý večer, moc děkuji za představení a úvod do semináře. So, well, once more in English. Hello everybody. Hello to all your homes. Uh, well, thank you for coming here and for your interest in, in these webinars. Um, well, I would warmly like to uh, welcome you here for the warmer schoolers and fillers. You already know the topic, uh, but uh, what are we going to do today? Uh, first of all, uh, I want to focus a little bit on what warmer schoolers and fillers are, what's typical for each of those activities. And then most of time, we would of course spend trying or speaking about activities, many activities. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, I would like to mention that some of you teach at primary schools, some of you at secondary schools. So there is always a way how to modify the activities to make them more difficult, uh, more challenging, or on the other hand, how to, uh, how to prepare a kind of easier version of those. Some of the activities are not prepared for online environment. Uh, I think it's okay nowadays because we can all teach face-to-face -face in our lessons. So these activities we can't really try here properly. I will just try to explain how, how they work. But there are a few of them which we can try online. So then uh, I would like to ask you and welcome you to cooperate and to participate in our chat and uh, to take part in all those activities where you can, because I think it's great that uh, when you try them, it's easier to modify them for your students. Uh, and uh, you can also remember them in an easier way. So let's have a look at warmer schoolers, Phyllis. So as I promised, we will start uh, with a few descriptors. Uh, here you can see a list of many words. Uh, there are adjectives, uh, there are some, some verbs. Uh, and what I want you to do is to think on your own which ones are more relevant to warmers and which one are rather connected with coolers. So I will give you a minute so that you can focus on them and then we will look at the division. So now, here we can see uh, uh, the overview when we divide these uh, activities or descriptors into those two categories. Uh, so basically, 
in general, we can say that all warmer schoolers are fill and fillers are kind of games. Uh, we usually bring them to the classroom to uh, bring some fun, to bring some kind of entertainment. Uh, but on the other hand, they still have their specific function. So while performers are more uh, to bring energy, fun, uh, they are competitive. So we can expect that the students would be active. They will want to work fast. Uh, on the other hand, the coolers are rather the ones when students keep more quiet, they try to focus on their work. Uh, they even maybe are more interested in working on their own because they don't want uh, other students uh, to, uh, to somehow uh, participate uh, because they want to show us how, how they think and, and, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, Mostly when we work with younger children, uh, we need the coolers uh, because uh, younger learners are very active. They're always full of energy, very talkative. And when we bring a warmer in the classroom, sometimes uh, it's, it's too much of energy. Uh, so there we focus on coolers a bit more because we want to cool them down. We want to concentrate, we want to make them concentrate and help them work se sorry, seriously. On the other hand, uh, working with teenagers means that we need lots of warmers because teenagers are usually more silent. They have the feeling that everything is boring or strange. So they sometimes uh, don't really cooperate on that level we want them to. So then warmers might be very helpful because they would definitely increase the energy and help them participate. So uh, having a look at each of them on their own. Warmers are mostly used at the beginning of the lessons or some activities because these are the ones where we want to activate schemata. We want to get the students the idea that they are going to work in English and to basically give them the energy to work. Uh, we sometimes call them icebreakers, but you can also think about warmers as some kind of lead in activities because they basically lead in to a more uh, serious thing. And uh, as I've already mentioned, the teenagers, they help us to keep them away. On the other hand, coolers, uh, they, they help us to cool the students down. And it means that we usually use them at the end of the activity because we want them to concentrate on the results. Uh, maybe we want them to reflect a little bit either on how they feel or what they've learned. And then somewhere in between, there are so-called fillers. <clears throat> they are really uh, <clears throat> what, uh, what we call them. Uh, they they uh, are there to fill in some time, uh, which is uh, by accident an extra time. So between two stages where we see that one stage was maybe very fast and we don't want to move to another one, uh, then we can use a filler. At the end of a lesson where we have just two minutes left and it doesn't make sense to open anything new, then we can use a filler. So here, we don't have a concrete focus uh, on something special, but we rather want to use this time uh, in a useful way rather than uh, just to kill it, doing something which doesn't make sense for the students. And now the activities. So the first one called catch the ball is something which we unfortunately can't really try here because I can't uh, throw the ball to you. Uh, but uh, with students, it's quite nice uh, that uh, they can uh, uh, interact just not with words, but uh, they, can, uh, they can use the ball to nominate uh, a person who's going to be active. So what I do is that I bring a ball to the classroom and I give them a task. One of the possible uh, ideas is uh, that I ask them to spell a word. So I throw a ball to a first person and say, please spell the word tiger. The pupil spells the word and then throws the ball to another one, giving them another word which uh, they want them to spell. These could be just random words 
or uh, if you want to uh, focus on what you did during the previous lesson, you can give them a specific topic that they should uh, name the words just from the area of, let's say, animals or uh, unit one or anything which, which uh, the students will basically know uh, what category you mean. Uh, if you want to do it a bit more difficult, you can ask them to answer a question. So again, I would throw the ball to the first one and would say, for example, what did you do yesterday? Or uh, what would you do if you had, let's say, one million? Or where would you go on holiday uh, if you could choose any place uh, anywhere on the planet? And again, uh, the pupil answers and throws the ball to another person. Uh, well, the third idea would be just to finish a sentence. So again, it could be a specific grammar or it could be just like anything sentence which comes to your mind. Uh, and it could be something like, uh, at weekend, I'm going to. And again, uh, the student finishes the sentence. Uh, of course, you can come with millions of ideas for this activity. That's one of the reasons why I like it so much because uh, it's like amazingly flexible uh, and it's usually effective for any word category uh, any grammar it's a kind of just like good opener of, of a lesson and uh, if I don't buy like, you don't have a ball or your students don't uh, find uh, throwing the ball that fun so then uh, you can ask them just to nominate uh, it's, it's absolutely okay when the students can uh, call the other person just by their name and then uh, the next person can continue. Another warmer uh, called football, as you can see, is connected with the uh, with the sport itself. And uh, I like playing it this way uh, just because uh, there are always lots of boys uh, in the classrooms who like playing football. And I would say like football is a kind of national sport here. Uh, and uh, this means that all the students uh, know uh, what, what, what's going to happen. So you either can prepare uh, a real picture or you can just draw a tiny little sketch on the board or the children can sketch it on a piece of paper. It depends whether you want to play with the whole class or uh, when the students know the game, they can play just in pairs. So that's what I would recommend to start playing in pairs uh, sooner or later. Uh, and the thing is that the students share the picture uh, of a football pitch. They work in pairs. So each uh, student would take, let's say, a piece of rubber or a piece of paper and would put it in the middle of the field. That's the beginning of, of the game. Then everybody will need a pen and a piece of paper for the answers. Uh, Actually, if your students are disciplined, uh, it's okay even to play without that paper and pen. But uh, my students usually fight a lot and they argue that somebody said the answer first and the other person just repeated it. So to avoid all these uh, quarrels, uh, I think that it's easier when they write the answers on a piece of paper and it's quite clear whose answer was correct and whose was incorrect. So everybody is in the middle of the field and they are waiting for the first task. If they answer in the correct way, they can move one step towards uh, the other person's goal. So here they're like moving uh, actually five times and the main idea is to score. So when one of the students gets to the goal, uh, they score a goal. The variety of questions or tasks is again uh, endless. So you can play this game, for example, with irregular verbs. So you give the student uh, the word come and who writes the correct answer on the piece of paper, which would be came, then the person can move. Uh, with question tags, you just start a sentence and would say, you have never visited Prague. And the students are to write the question tag, have you? Um, 
I like playing it also with countable and uncountable nouns. So I say food and they have to decide whether it's countable or uncountable. Again, the correct answer means that they can move one place forward. Uh, well, last but not least, make and do is, uh, is another categorizing activity, which is great for this game. So you say homework and they have to decide whether it's do or make. Who has a correct answer, they can move. Of course, sooner or later, there's too much football and uh, you would probably look for some other ideas how to change this game. So uh, maybe you've seen it in, in the previous webinar, uh, but if not, here is the idea that you can play it as a kind of shark game. So uh, here it works uh, the other way around. The students are represented by the smileys at the top of the staircase and they move as soon as they make a mistake. So when there is a mistake, they move one uh, stair lower. And of course, their task is to survive not to get to the shark because the shark would eat them and that's the end of the game. So this is a kind of negative uh, version of, of the football, which is kind of the positive, but uh, here, uh, if, if you are okay with sharks and don't mind that it's a bit cruel, so then uh, it can bring again some fun and the activity works the same way. Well, we don't have many opportunities, I guess nowadays to use the real paper dictionaries in our lessons, but this warmer or filler might give you uh, an, uh, uh, a chance to, to show uh, the students uh, how the old paper ones worked. So uh, the activity uh, can be played either in teams or uh, there could be just individuals, it's up to you. And uh, I would say that the level uh, matters here a lot. And uh, it's, it's just a game where you open up a dictionary and the first word which is at the top of the page is the word students write down. And then you take the last word from the same page. The students again have to write it down. And then they have a time limit to write all the possible words which might be in between. So here we practice not just the English words, but also uh, the alphabet order, which might be a little bit problem. Uh, for the students, but I still think that it's uh, it's lots of fun when the students realize that it's very difficult for them to order the words according to the alphabet, because it's clear that it's, for example, uh, let's say the first would be paper. Uh, so it's clear that uh, uh, P is the first word, uh, but they sometimes struggle what words, uh, well, sorry, what letters uh, come, come after that. Uh, so uh, they usually laugh a lot while doing it, and especially uh, while checking whether their answers are correct. Uh, sometimes, especially with lower levels, we have to be a little bit um, uh, more, uh, let's say, or, or like less challenging in the way that it would be too difficult uh, to give the students two words which are too close to each other. So as, as, as for example, I mentioned the word paper and the next word would be people. Uh, that, that, that's what might happen in the dictionary. Uh, but uh, for especially uh, learners from primary school, uh, it would be difficult to find the words in between these two. So then, it's better to give them either just the very first word, so we would give them paper and ask them to, words, to write any words which would come after in the, in the dictionary or in the alphabet. Or uh, if you still want to use the dictionary even for the last word, so then it's better to move a few pages uh, more rather than just one so that there is a kind of bigger gap between the words. So you would keep the word paper and then the next one uh, might be, uh, for example, something starting this R, so there could be a rock. And then they would, they would try to find all the words which would be in between. Anyway, what will happen at the end of this is that the students have many words most of them beginning with the same letter. And now the question is what we can do with the list. Because of course, when we have 
no more time. We can just finish the activity there. We can count how many words they managed to find. And that might be the end of that. But sometimes we don't want to lose it or we might have lots of, uh, lots of extra time. So we can do something else. Uh, my idea is usually to connect this activity with a little bit of speaking. So uh, therefore, after that, you might play a kind of three minute story game, which works in the way that the students work again in pairs or small groups. Actually, they can be in the same groups as they were when they were looking up the words. And uh, their task is to tell a story using as many words as possible from their list. But again, you will give them a time limit. So I usually find the three minutes kind of okay for the story because it's not too long. But on the other hand, uh, it's still possible to create a story or a kind of, you know, uh, the tiny little one. So uh, this is the way how the students then might uh, use the words in a uh, communicative task. Uh, they are retelling, or uh, they're like telling a story using or reusing these words. And the other people in the same group might either check and count how many uh, words they were able to use, uh, or uh, they would just listen to the story. And you can say that after three minutes, another person has to continue. So it would mean uh, that you, you might have a longer story that uh, the whole group would share. Well, talking about stories and uh, telling stories especially, uh, I have to mention one more uh, warm or filler uh, because well, this always have, uh, depends on uh, the aim. So sometimes you use these activities just to warm them up, to bring the topic. Sometimes you use them uh, to uh, use that time effectively. So these could be used in both cases. And uh, three words only was inspired by that very well-known uh, TV show, which is called Partichka. I'm pretty sure you've heard of that. Uh, and in general, I like using these things uh, because uh, usually when you find out that there is a TV show uh, which you find funny and the children find funny because they will always tell you that that, that it was great, that they were watching something on TV. Uh, so I think it's nice to reuse their ideas for some activities during the English lessons. So I very often use, uh, for example, activities from Mame Radi Česko or Partička uh, because the kids know how the activities work and they, they find them funny. So this activity is three words. Only work in the way that you give them a beginning of the story. And then they have to continue telling the story. However, they can add only three words. So, well, again, it's difficult to play it together as at the moment, I guess that there are like 400 people. Uh, but uh, I have uh, some ideas pre-prepared. So the next person uh, who would actually start would say, I heard a, uh. the next might my, my continue this strange noise coming, and another one adding from the kitchen, and so on and so forth. So the story would continue for some time till they reach some kind of uh, end of that. Uh, I, I really love using this uh, because uh, here they don't focus just on the story itself, but they much more have to focus on the grammar and on those tiny little words, uh, which they usually struggle with, because here uh, they have to count, count the auxiliary verbs, they have to think about the articles. Uh, of course, everybody uh, is focused on prepositions and all the tiny little details. So uh, all together, it would give you great like communicative and grammar practice uh, because uh, it's both necessary to focus on. Uh, it's also possible to play this game in a, uh, in a written form. Uh, however, it's not that fun uh, because what works is when they can hear how it works, when they, when they have to read it on a piece of paper, even though you, you do it on the board, it's always uh, kind of more difficult for, uh, for the students to, to write all, all the words down.
So I guess that uh, we are all uh, warmed up at the moment, so we can focus a bit uh, on the coolers. Uh, so the first one uh, would be an opposite meaning one. When uh, the idea of this one is to keep the students think a little bit about uh, vocabulary, about grammar, and to also make them write a little bit. So at the beginning, it's enough when you prepare just a sentence. Uh, well, but then when they know the activity, it's okay to work even with, let's say, a paragraph or a few sentences together. So first, I will show you a text. Okay, so can you now visualize the man? Okay, probably not a nice picture. So we need to change it for a bit more positive one. So I would ask you if you can think about anything well, like as much as possible what you can change here regarding vocabulary grammar to so the absolute opposite of what is written here so i would give you time to try to change anything possible to the opposite meaning okay yeah I, I, yeah rather than miserable you'll be fantastic so i hope you like my lady uh who i guess would be uh well beautiful, old, but wearing some kind of modern, fashionable, sexy clothes and definitely full of energy. So, uh, well, as you experience, there's lots of vocab words uh, in this activity. And uh, it's, it's one of the activities when students usually don't complain, they have to write anything down uh, because as they try to show off and to bring some amazing ideas. Uh, they, they usually keep writing without any, uh, without any objections, which is perfect. Another cooler uh, might be uh, a mnemonic one. And this one uh, is, uh, I would say, uh, great because it can really welcome uh, all the uh, like let, let's say students with creative intelligence because well we, we know the topic of uh, like mixed ability classes uh, we we all know that in our classes there are students who are focused on different things uh, and uh, they're usually uh, very creative students uh, who uh, maybe don't have so much space during uh, language lessons but here this activity is definitely something for them. So it works mostly at the end of the vocab lessons where you think of the words which the students uh, learned. So you either presented them as new or maybe you read a text and you found some difficult words in the text. Uh, so you put them on the board and then the students should pick up at least one word. Uh, they have to write it and uh, to create it or draw it, sketch it in a way that the picture shows the meaning of the verb. So here, here are a few like real pictures uh, from my lessons. So as you can see, uh, there could be some kind of easy pictures, uh, which were like prepared by, uh, by younger learners as the worm and the hat. And on the other hand, uh, there are some like secondary school students who, who created balance and movement, uh, as well as, as, as the ancient, uh, ancient castle coming there. So uh, this activity would definitely cool the students down and would help them think about uh, the meaning of the words in a different way than just uh, using them in a text or, uh, or while speaking. On the other hand, as soon as they all finish and you prepare some kind of gallery of the words we learned today, uh, it usually works well because the students like checking the other pictures. And again, uh, if they are like visual kinds of learners, uh, it's great for them because it's easier to remember the meaning of the words. Of course, this is more relevant for younger learners, as I've mentioned, but uh, when you've got uh, some kind of more mature learners, what you can try is to do it in a bit more complex way. Uh, so rather than to create the you know, smiley who is laughing, we can use the word, uh, or not just the word, but 
especially the letters, uh, we need to have to create that word. Here, the task for the students is to uh, either use only uh, the first letters to create some words which are connected with the meaning. That would be a kind of easy level. So again, this is the way how you can maybe challenge the task. So for the students who you know are not very good at English, you can ask them only to draw the picture which would represent the meaning. The ones who are kind of in the middle, you can ask them to use the beginning letters of some other words which are somehow connected with the meaning. Or as you can see here, the kind of top level, which is done in the way that they use the letters as the beginnings of some other words, but all together they have to create a kind of sentence which makes uh, or which creates the meaning or somehow supports the meaning. So uh, as here is, laugh and you get happy. Uh, well, I, an easy advice, uh, sometimes, sometimes difficult uh, to be done, but uh, definitely a nice one. So uh, what I was thinking about that maybe now at the moment, we can try to think about the words teach uh, because, well, uh, you know, teaching is something which definitely connects us. Uh, so I was wondering whether you would think either about some words which are connected with the beginnings of the like letters T, uh, E, A, C, H, or whether some of you would even be interested in trying to create a real sentence that would somehow define teaching. <laughs> to each, wow, that's amazing, yeah, perfect. Yeah, because it's, it's to each student, right? We deliver some information to each student. So I will give you some time so that you can think. Oh, teach English and communicate happily. That's amazing. Thank you. Task energy activity, creative, happy, enthusiastic. Yay. Wow. Great words. To elevate above common horrendousness. <laughs> okay. Oh, teach English at Child's Hospital. That would be nice. Uh huh. Oh, sorry, test each activity can help. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, test, teach, test. That's the nice format of the lesson, right? Tough, endless, and challenging hours. Yes, you're right. But amazing job anyway. Teachers of English are creative humans. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Try educating and caring. Yeah, okay. Great ideas. Super. Thank you. So, yeah, so you exactly see how it works. Uh, well, I think that you would get lots of fun with your students using this activity every now and then because they are they're usually like very creative and they have amazing ideas. And I always have to laugh at what they what they bring because it's it's always like nice and it's really the kind of nice feeling that they, they can enjoy it. And uh, that's a kind of nice way of how to end the lesson because everybody then is leaving uh, on that happy mode. So that's great. Right, so let's warm up a little bit again. Uh, well, we are getting to a section uh, which is one of my favorites, uh, just because I love halves of sentences. That, that's, that's, uh, that's something which I uh, use very often uh, because I think that it's, uh, it's a kind of nice way how to on one hand support the learners uh, in the way that you give them the, uh, let's say scaffolding or the idea, and then they can finish it on their own. So quotation would be uh, one of them. Uh, it works in the way that I give the student the real beginning of a quotation and I ask them to finish it. And sometimes even they're able to uh, uh, guess who the author uh, of the quotation is. So uh, have you got any ideas how to finish this one? If you want to be happy, Oh, it's chocolate. Great. That's mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Smile. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, there was Leo Tolstoy who said that's enough to be where we want to be happy. <laughs> yeah, but your ideas are, yeah, definitely uh, much more interesting. Like, just like, yeah, go ski. Yeah, drink coffee, cup of wine. Amazing. Be yourself. Great. Amazing. Super. I got an, oh, do not watch the news. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I've got another one. Better than a thousand days of diligent study is. 
So it's actually a Japanese proverb, which say uh, that is one day with a great teacher <laughs> and a day of work. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm, there is home. Nice. Well, Mamata Gandhi said that there is life, but, but I definitely like your ideas too. Great. So I, I think that you have the idea. Again, it might be an amazing warmer, especially when you are going to listen uh, about somebody or read about somebody famous. So then having a few of their quotations uh, make uh, the students much more interested and they would even like give them the idea of what they are going to talk about, like what kind of person he or she were. So, so I think that again, that would, that would bring the interest and warm them up really effectively. But staying with the half of sentences, uh, here is the way how uh, I like to practice some grammar because, you know, half of sentences are amazing for practicing grammar. So here, just the idea of what, what is but in fact, just it works the other way around. You don't have the beginning. You know that the sentence should finish, but in fact, it's good for you. So again, I would ask you for some ideas what in fact is good for us. <laughs> okay, I guess like chocolate is a big topic for all teachers, right? So don't eat chocolate, but in fact it's good for you. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I heard that chocolate is vegetable or at least fruit, right? So it's, it's healthy, it's good. Yeah, studying English is difficult, but in fact it's good for you. Yeah, okay, that, that's, yeah, that's something you can tell our students, great. Mm -hmm. uh, another one would be, but in fact he's quite nice. So do we know anybody who, in fact, is quite nice? <laughs> okay, so we've got a scary principle here, <laughs> but he's quite nice, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, seems strange, looks angrily. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, so we know all the bosses and headmasters, yeah, and directors, yeah, who, who in fact, are quite nice, but they, they have to be straight. <laughs> exactly, amazing. And the last one, but in fact, she's not really. <laughs> she looks pregnant, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She seems nice, but in fact, she's not really raised. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So again, here, uh, the, the way you create the ending, it affects what kind of language or vocabulary the students would be forced to use. So either you want to focus on adjectives, as, as here we do, or if you want to uh, have a look at something specific, everything will basically work. The best way is to connect both these games together. So it might be a bit crazy at the beginning, but finally you will get lots of fun in your classroom. So one topic for the whole class. So let's say the topic would be conditionals or another way how to use it is to use the, the, the so like the bigger it is, the, the more expensive or whatever combinations. Uh, it might even be used with, um, uh, for example, uh, reported speech. So that's the beginning that you tell the students that uh, we are going to focus on this uh, grammar pattern. Then you divide the class into two halves. One half is preparing the beginning of the sentence. So for example, if you focus on conditionals, uh, let's say the second conditional, they would say, if I were a princess, and they could, they could create anything which would follow this pattern. So if I had 1 million, if I could go on holiday, if I knew English, whatever works. That's just what they have to do is to follow the pattern. The other half of the class does the same with the other half of the sentence. So then they would say like, I would buy a castle, I would marry a prince, uh, I would have a, go to school again, and, and so on and so forth. So here they have some kind of time limit to prepare these questions, uh, sorry, the, these halves. You usually have to monitor to help them a little bit uh, so that they are not struggling. And then after the time limit is up, the whole class goes together again and they take part in the way that like the first group reads the beginning and the other half tries to find the best matching ending which they've prepared before uh, to finish the sentence. 
So here, uh, it's it, it, it's usually very funny because, of course, uh, the students want to laugh as well. So they usually try to pick up some uh, funny funny endings for the for the beginnings, and uh, I think that you get enjoy it a lot while practicing a grammar which the students actually well finally uh, not realize that there's all the grammar behind that because they would have the feeling that they are just playing a game. So. Uh, well, I guess that this is the last warmer at the moment, uh, and then we will move again uh, somewhere else. So the 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 one uh, we we call a pancake. I, I don't know whether there is a kind of real name, but uh, my my uh, my pupils say that uh, the pancake is the best name for that game. So each student start with a pen and a piece of paper. That's the beginning. Then the First thing they should write at the top of the paper is when something happened. So basically they would just write yesterday, tomorrow, at five o'clock, on Sunday, whatever time expression they write down. And now there comes a very important step. They fold that piece of paper so that it's not possible to see what they've written and they pass the paper to the person sitting on their right, which means that now at the moment, everybody is sitting with a kind of new piece of paper, which came from the person uh, sitting on the left, I hope, and they are prepared for another question. And another one is who. So here they again just write who. So my father, their neighbor, the whole class, Spider-Man, whoever works for who, then they can write it down. Again, they fold the paper and pass it to the person sitting on their right. Now, here comes a kind of tricky one because we are not asking for the third piece of information, but we want them to write down an activity. Uh, it's actually enough when they write it in the kind of uh, infinitive form because when you remember the first question, it was when. And of course, it's impossible to write a concrete verb form at the moment because they don't know who uh, wrote what. So actually here they write just a verb, just an activity, uh, which would be even in infinitive form. Again, fold it past the paper, and then we continue with the series of questions. So could be how, where, oh, sorry. And that could be, let's say, the end of that activity. So now at the very end, the paper has moved uh, from the first person to the fifth one. The fifth person writes the final information saying where, and then pass the paper to the, city, to the person sitting on the right. The person, the person then has like a new piece of paper and they can refold it, which means that they would get basically a sentence saying when somebody, now the activity, how they did it and where. So what they have to do is at the moment to think about the form of the verb because they have the then, then an activity in the infinitive and uh, they, according to the information, like when it happened, have to change it so that the whole sentence works together. And then we just spend time reading the sentences out loud. And again, well, lots of them are funny. Uh, as soon as you played for more times, so then the students know what's going to happen. So they try to prepare some kind of uh, funny pieces of information in there, or they sometimes even write about something what happened in the class, uh, which on the other hand might be a bit tricky. So uh, when, when there is a kind of like strange feeling in the class because something might have happened even like before the English lesson, uh, we, we have the agreement that we are not going to write anybody who is in the class uh, in that section who. Uh, because we don't want to to make it like too personal sometimes, but in general, uh, it it always works, and they create the sentences and they practice a little bit of tenses because they have to uh, choose the activity uh, like the verb to to the correct form. Of course, you can prepare lots of patterns. It doesn't always have to 
be in that way, like when, who, an activity, who, how, where. Uh, you can add anything you like or which is relevant uh, for your students. And uh, uh, it, it even can be like shorter, whatever you need or how much time you have to spend on it. Well, uh, now moving to something uh, which uh, my students and I guess like yours will, will like as well is playing with emojis. Uh, this is uh, something which basically gives you uh, uh, an interview or the information about what some people were talking about. So first of all, I would like you to have a look at this uh, interview and tell me what you think the people are saying. So what about the first uh, A? What's the piece of information hidden behind all these emojis? How are you? Excellent. Yes, perfect. Okay. What does the B reply? Okay. Yeah. Somebody overslept. Yeah. Okay. Somebody's yeah, really sad. Mm -hmm. Came late. Definitely. Okay. So the person is definitely not okay. It's either sad or tired or, or, or kind of crossed. Uh, the problem is that they overslept or maybe we would say the alarm clock didn't work. Excellent. And then somebody was furious. So it could be a teacher. It could be your boss. It could be the headmaster. Yeah, perfect. So again, it depends on like whether we are talking about uh, us as teachers or whether it would be the uh, uh, written by, by our student. Uh, well, hopefully not by a student because A is saying something in reply. So let's have a look at the second. Oh, Puyu, let's have a drink. Yes, exactly. So hopefully these are not students. <laughs> uh, this was just written by our colleagues or somebody who's definitely an adult. And yeah, he's happy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is again something which you can have lots of fun with because, uh, well, the kids love emojis. Uh, so you can either prepare them these tiny little uh, interviews uh, or you can even prepare a story. They can prepare stories, they can share them, rewrite them, recreate them. Uh, Anything uh, which you find nice, uh, you can uh, just write tiny little sentences, then they can put them into the correct order as soon as they rewrite them. Uh, again, tons of ideas uh, you will definitely get as soon as uh, you, you, you try it. Uh, well, going more to technology, starting with emojis, we are, we, are, we are like moving a bit further. I would like you to try uh, your QR code scanners. So. In your mobile phones, I hope you have them with you. If not, don't worry, uh, you, you will see what's behind that. But if you have the opportunity to try it, uh, if you could please take your mobile phone, use the QR code scanner, which probably uh, is in there and scan this code. Well, while you are uh, looking up for, for the QR code scanner, uh, I, oh, sorry, oh, your scanner doesn't work. Sorry, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll show you how it works. Uh, just why it's here. Uh, I like using like every now and then, right? Uh, QR codes uh, because, <laughs> yes. Okay, somebody already got to Uglish. Uh, so I like using QR codes either at the beginning of the lesson uh, to warm them up, to give them the opportunity to find something behind the code and do it and get interested. Or it's great when you, for example, hide their homework behind that. Just like, well, that's your homework and the QR code and bye-bye. And they scan it and they, they like have the feeling that it's lots of fun. Uh, so sometimes I just put it on the door when they are leaving the classroom after the lesson. So I say like, well, the homework is on the, on the door anyway. So they scan it while they are leaving and they just go home and, and they have, they have uh, the, the either web page or the text or whatever is behind that code uh, pre-prepared so that they can start doing the homework. Well, here, as, as you already know, uh, is, actually a uh, link to, to Uglish web page. Uh, just before I leave, uh, here is the web page where I created that, uh, that QR code. Um, it's for free. So you can basically create anything. You can hide anything behind that. As I've already mentioned, the web page, video, listening, picture, text, PDF, uh, whatever 
is anyhow useful for your lesson could be hidden behind this code. So here we are moving to Uglish, uh, which uh, means that you will get a page like this. Uh, but it, it's not that beautiful as YouTube, uh, but I think that for English teachers, Uglish is maybe even uh, more effective. Uh, so here into the uh, window, you can put anything, uh, a word or a phrase, which you would like to use. I will show you in a minute like why you would be interested in using it. For example, I put there teaching English. So all of a sudden, what happens is that Uglish will find all the videos they have in their database, which have the expression teaching English inside. It means that here you can see they have like 900 videos with the expression teaching English. And uh, here you can start playing the video. So the first video would, would, would begin and it would have the subtitles on. And as it's moving, uh, they would even highlight uh, the phrases you're interested in. When you are uh, fine with that piece, you can use uh, that blue button below the video and you would skip to another video, which again uh, contains the phrase here, teaching English. So you would get lots, lots, lots of examples for both listening and pronunciation, uh, which would give you the amazing context for either the phrase or, or the word itself. And now again, how to use it in our lessons? Well, regarding warmer schoolers fillers. Uh, one of the activity might be that students would learn to listen to that word. And uh, as you will be playing and changing the videos, their task would be to clap as soon as they hear the word or the phrase. That could be one of the ideas. Another one might be that you are playing those videos one by one. And the task is to find out what phrase is the one they can hear in each of these extracts. So the students don't know the phrase you were looking for, but they would just listen to them and then they would, uh, they would find uh, the types. Another one might be the other way around that you would ask them to think about the context in, in which uh, the phrase was used. So, Again, uh, many ideas uh, you, can, you can use it for and, uh, and uh, enjoy it. Uh, very often we also use pictures uh, when, uh, when we have to uh, prepare our students for maturita exams, Cambridge exams. Uh, there are always lots of opportunities for pictures. And here uh, the idea works in the way that the students are not to describe the picture immediately, uh, but we can ask them to maybe ask uh, about the picture, whatever they would like to learn. So here we would again kind of make them interested. For example, who's in that picture? Why is that girl uh, using that toy? Uh, what is on that? Uh, where is she going? Yeah, so, so all the questions would be relevant. Uh, and uh, if you have a picture which is uh, somehow connected uh, uh, with a story behind that, that's even more amazing because you can give them uh, the pieces of information one by one, which means that they would be more and more interested in what's going on in that picture. And they would be motivated to ask you more and more questions. An amazing filler which would, uh, which would cost you nothing uh, is a translation star. Uh, I sometimes use it to, to motivate uh, pupils to translate when we have just like a few minutes at the end of the lesson. What I do is to give them a sentence in Czech and they translate it into English. As soon as uh, I tick the, question, uh, uh, the sentence as translated correctly, they can draw a part of the star. So technically what they need to get is five correct sentences. 
And as soon as they finish the whole star, uh, they usually get an award. So when they are uh, younger learners, so they, they're okay with a sticker. Uh, when, when we played with uh, like older students, uh, they are very happy when they get some kind of mark one or, or something like that, or a kind of tiny little star in my notebook, uh, which means that they were, they were active during the lesson. So again, something they can, they can keep on a separate piece of paper. And whenever you have a few minutes at the end of the lesson, uh, you, can, you can just like try the translation star and uh, keep them working. Well, the last cooler, uh, well, called Exit Ticket. So uh, this is the one which would help you <laughs> to exit this webinar, uh, is an idea uh, for a kind of feedback at the end of the lesson. The Exit Ticket works in a way that you prepare just a little piece of paper. This is something you can have in your computer. You can have like um, many copies uh, at one page and then you just cut it or I, I have like always uh, a packed pile of them on my on my desk and um, they could be either general like what I learned today or well I need to know more about something or it could be done in a funny way so maybe hashtag this lesson yeah so well hashtags are the the keywords uh which like in a in a teenage uh way are called rather hashtags uh um, so well, hashtag the lesson, and uh, well, from those hashtags, you will you, you would get lots of information. Or if you want to find out what they really learned, uh, so then it could be a tiny little test. And in each kind of cloud, they would just write the correct answer for some four multiple cho choice uh, questions, right? So I would look like a question A, B, C, and they would just write uh, the the relevant answers into into each cloud. Uh, well, they, they they give me the ticket into the box as they are leaving the classroom because well it's called an exit ticket. Uh, so uh, that's that's the way how how they kind of can leave the room or exit the room, uh, and uh, that's uh, the end for their uh, for their uh, English. And uh, I I always get some kind of relevant information. And as I promised, this is the exit ticket. So it means that uh, this is also the exit and the end uh, of, of my presentation. So, uh, well, here are the, uh, here are the ideas uh, I thought uh, you, you might find useful. And uh, I can see we still have, yeah, we have three questions here in the question and answers box. So I will open the box and we'll have a look at the, at the questions. So, Beginning and ending activities and easier topic rather than conditionals for younger learners. Well, for younger learners, uh, you can maybe just do it uh, in the way that uh, you say, for example, we are going to do, uh, let's say, past simple. So one of the groups would begin the sentence, so would say like who and what the person did, and the other half would say when and where. Yeah, so you, you have to always give them a clear pattern, like what, what their part is. Uh, or maybe I can imagine playing it with uh, relative clauses as well. So again, one part would, would give the main clause and the other part would give uh, the one starting either which or who, uh, and that would be their task then to mix it in a proper way when they get the beginning. So I think that these could be used with the uh, with the lower levels. Is it paid? Seventeen fifty nine. So so I guess that this this question might be relevant for the QR code creator. And yes, you you, well, you would find uh, the ones which are paid and would give you like lots of extra things. But I use the ones which are for free. And you either can use the one uh, I, I had in the presentation or when you go to Google and you put like QR creator free. So then uh, or for free, both both works. So then uh, you would you would get the links to the ones which are for free. Usually it's done in the way that like if you want some like basic things, it's for free. And then if you want some extra, like that they would remember the QR code, or you would have like a proper uh, proper file there. So then it's it's paid. Okay. Uh, the exit tickets, we can also use it as a kind of feedback from students. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Exit tickets are like endless source of joy. 
uh, at a fun, like you can, you can use it like, yeah, to, to get the feedback on anything. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, super. Uh, right. Okay. So I can't see any more questions coming. Sorry to keep you a bit longer than expected. Thank you very much. Thank you for all your, uh, all your questions and answers for your participation. Uh, it was really great to be here with you. Uh, so I wish you like great evening. I hope that you'd find some of those activities useful and would help you uh, in, in, uh, uh, in preparing your lessons. And yeah, okay, well, one more question before I finish. So the QR code as a homework, uh, how could we use it? Well, I just print out the QR code uh, and uh, put it either on the, on the board or on the door. I would say like, yeah, that's the, that's the homework when you are leaving, don't, don't forget to scan it. And that's it, you, you don't have to do more because the teenagers, they're amazing with this technology. So they will, they will know, they usually don't, don't need any extra support. Okay, great. So thank you very much, have a great evening and hope to meet you again soon. Uh, okay, so thank you and bye-bye.